you're finally finished. You were so much work. Hi, it's Kiev, and today I have a truly giant work I want to show you. The one I just talked to. <laughs> Cut me sounds like it was a lot of work. She's right here. I mean, you can't see her because I censored her, but I promise she looks even better. If you know that I put a whole month of work into her. Get some popcorn and let's get started on this almost one hour long video. It must have been June or July when Kiro from Kiro's workshop announced to hold an open collab that anybody that wanted could join. The theme was Astral Chimera. He wanted us participants to use our birthday to create a Chimera doll. The Chimera is a hybrid animal from Greek mythology that was depicted as a lion with an additional head of a goat and a tail that ended in a snake's head. We should take this concept and use our zodiac signs of different cultures to create a hybrid of all of them. The cultures were the Mesopotamian, the Mayan and the Chinese. I was born on 19th of March 1969. The Mesopotamian zodiac is the system that the West uses today, so in this system I'm a Pisces. In the Mayan zodiac system I'm a Jaguar, or an Ocelot. In the Chinese system I'm a Rat. So these three animals will be displayed by my chimera that I will be creating. I quickly sketched something up to show you what I have roughly in my mind. I'm thinking about a jagger body with a long fish tail and red ears. I will go in depth later on when I explain the concept in more detail because I did quite a lot of research about these three zodiac systems and what they were actually used for. To get started, I choose my base doll. This is me trying to get in the middle of my camera. <laughs> ah, there we go. As you can see, I decided on this leg and armless Frankie. I got her obviously secondhand. This is one of these things I will never understand how children can be so brutal with the toys to the point of actual destruction of the toy. As a kid, it never even crossed my mind to do anything like that. On the opposite, I would have been distraught to no end. But from observations from toy flea market finds, it seems like more and more dolls and robots suffer from this treatment in recent years. Poor doll, I will promise to repair you again. Since I won't be using this doll original hair, I will be removing it with nail scissors. This hair doesn't suffer from sticky hair syndrome, so I will be keeping it for a future project. By removing the head with the hairdryer method, I accidentally ripped off her neck pack. Oops. And also killed my brush. And it was even an expensive one. But since the plastic piece was still intact in the neck, I will be able to repair it. And the brush. By removing the head, I also decided to remove her legs. I heated them up with a hairdryer and popped them out of the socket. I need to remove all of the leftover hair. I do so by cutting the head open at the back and scraping the mess of glue out of there. I mean, look at that chunk. I really dislike this part because the residue of the glue always needs to be extra cleaned with rubbing alcohol. Ew. Ew, 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 ew. Here I snap back in the neck pack and glue the plastic back onto the neck. I make sure to cover everything in the neck, even the part that should be movable and let it dry until it's kind of gooey. I move the neck pack around so it doesn't actually get stuck on the glue but let the glue make a protective layer around the plastic piece. 
I secure the neck with rubber bands and let the glue thoroughly dry and of course, move the neck pack around a few times. In the gluing meantime, I also repaired my brush. I'm not letting five bucks go to waste. Let's start prepping the doll for her transformation. Since she's getting red ears on the top of her head, I remove her human ears with an X-Acto knife. If you want to know how I plot my project, it looks like this. I'm the cipher role for others, but me. So I guess it's time to tell you my concept behind my creation. I'm not really inclined with the whole you are brave because you are Capri Sun thing. The zodiac system of the West is the Mesopotamian zodiac system that was more or less acquired in the 7th century before Christ and actually used to calculate the positions of planets and navigations of seafaring. That was the main thing the zodiac was used for, actual astronomy. That astrology was like, I take that, thank you, here's your horoscope, you will die in three days. Even back in the day, people were fascinated by that. There was even a 13th zodiac sign originally, the snake bearer, but was cut out out of cosmetic reasons because 12 is easier to spread over 12 months than 13. The Mayan calendar is the Mesoamerican calendar that was used by many peoples in the first century before Christ as a ritual calendar of their everyday life. The Chinese zodiac was and is still used for calculation of Feng Shui masters, for astrological good and less good days, as well for fortune telling. So to reiterate, the zodiac systems were actually used for calculating things. So, I imagined a grand and all-seeing machinery in form of a chimera, sitting in her dark citadel on a mechanical calendar that stretches over the entire floor. The chimera is several meters high and oversees her realm, at the edge of a cliff that lies several hundred miles above a giant body of water. She is mysterious and benevolent, but foresees everything, so don't come with ill intentions, she will know how to take care of them. Now you know what I was thinking about, so these sketches will make more sense. I want her to be in the middle of a mechanical solar system, an orrery, so I sketch up several different versions of how that could look like. Here's a close-up of her face. I originally intended her to have black eyes, but that idea will later come and bite me in the butt. I want her to be standing on an orb to make her look more dynamic. Time to work on her body. I already sanded off all her printed on scars and I'm now drilling a hole through the legs to thread crafting wire through it. I found this nifty paperweight at a local craft store and it's exactly what I imagined the herb she is standing on to look like. Here I am creating the skeleton of the Jaguar body. The crafting wire is fortunately so soft that I can knot it around several times. I measure the skeleton with my eyes and adjust it as many times as I find necessary. Look at that Jaguar! To save on material and make the body lighter, I use aluminium foil to buff out the general shape. It looks quite wonky now, but it will save me a lot of time and material down the line. And in case if anybody is wondering, I usually have my iPad in front of me when I work and either listen to music or watch Let's Plays. This time it was a Pokemon challenge, or actually several challenges. I 
use epoxy sculpt to make the body. I jumped quite a bit here with the steps, but I swear you didn't miss anything. Only my hair popping in and out of the frame. This is the first pass of the body shape. I want her to be in a dynamic pose, so I chose a half standing position. The back legs were easier sculpted than I thought. Piece for piece, I fill in the body with more epoxy sculpt to really flesh out the figure of the Jaguar. I ended up using all my epoxy sculpt, so I had to reorder my usual sized bottles. For some reason though, my usual seller upped the price up to 70 bucks for two normal sized containers. <laughs> so I had to order them from a Belgian seller. chest was really nice. I like using my silicone tool to make sharp corrections in the clay. On to the paws. I'm actually really, really happy that none of my zodiac signs contain a horse or something similar. I'm not particularly into centaurs, you know. I, I'm still traumatized from the first time I went on the Tumblr way back in the day and found the centaur hashtag. I was 13. My poor baby eyes. I mean. I have seen way worse things, way worse things over the past years, but centaurs, that's still something I can't get over with. I would probably never make a custom one either. Sorry, a weird trotter. During my research, I also found jaguar slash human chimeras. They are also in that uncanny valley kind of area. Maybe I subconsciously made my chimera standing, so it looks less like a four-legged humanoid. At the moment the jaguar looks quite malnourished. The whole body took around a week to get finished. I haven't talked yet about how I attach the body to the orb. It's simple. The clay is sticky like glue, so I just put it on the orb without any glue or drilling holes into it. I used my nails as a sculpting tool since it was way more comfortable to just use my nails than constantly picking up and laying down a tool. For anyone wondering, a 
epoxy scope leaves residue like any other clay, but can be removed by using rubbing alcohol on smooth surfaces like glass. Slowly the pores start looking like actual pores. body is finished. Off camera I will sand and remove all uneven surfaces and make the paws less fat. The only thing missing is the long fish tail, which I will add later. Before I start the phaser, I finish up all sculpting parts. So the red ears will be next in line. I use metal pins to secure them on the head. For this, I cut two holes in the head and attach them with epoxy sculpt. I form the clay like a simple pedal and cover the metal pen with it. Once on the head, I use my silicone tools to make them look like red ears. At the moment, they look like bare ears though. It was actually quite difficult to determine which part of the animals I will use for which part of the body. How does a red look like when I completely remove all of the small rodent part? A pointy snout? Doesn't really work. So I settled on the ears and combined the long red tail with the fish tail later on. Once I'm satisfied with the ear shape, I throw the head in the oven because I'm impatient. It worked wonders. Instead of 24 hours, it only took 20 minutes. On to the face up now. This time I'm really fast. Already at using my black pants. I wonder why... Oh. Oh. Oh no! Yeah, that's right, swipe, swipe that away, swipe away the shame. This is your sleep paralysis demon. Anyway, after I thought I had just created the ugliest face up ever, I just sat there, pondering life. Excuse me if there's no footage of the first stage of this face up, but I didn't want any evidence if I accidentally created another ugly face up twice in a row. I couldn't bear it. So in the middle of the night I settled with this version and I love her. I 
apparently I'm on a blue doll streak. The last three dolls I made are all blue. I have another one at the ready, so keep an eye out for it. Wink wink. Back to the face up. I initially wanted her to have a pleased, almost sleazy expression, which I couldn't express with the first draft, but with this one. Frankie has a wonderful face shape with her high eyelids and big lips. They can be easily used for half open eyes look. If there are any mistakes, I use my mini eraser pen and brush to swipe away any fuss. I have noticed recently that many customizers use acrylic or gouache paint to achieve brighter colors in a short time exclusively. Although I know of this method, I prefer the watercolor laying method. Since I'm more into semi-realistic face-ups, I like the unevenness of the layering more than the sharp and precise look of the brush paint. I will use acrylic gouache for this face-up later on for the lashes and the eyebrows though. I'm more of a combiner of material than wanting to exclusively use one type of paint. To each their own, I guess. Here I use acrylic paint to paint the iris lighter. Oh, pretty girl. Time and time again, I pick the pigment from the watercolor pencils and darken the upper parts of the lashes. I use a gray pencil to draw the shadow of the eyelid and use gold paint in the upper part of the iris where there would be a shadow. Afterwards I draw the highlights of the eyelids with shiny silver watercolor paint. 
and give her some highlights between and underneath her lashes. And for the very last step, I draw in her tiny pupils and draw her highlights in the eyes. Because I removed her human ears, I sent down the area where I didn't do the cleanest job with my mini hand drill. She is a mechanical chimera, so it's only natural that I paint her ears gold. I am and always have been heavily influenced by the steampunk scene. I think it started when I watched one of Jules Verne's screening of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea from the 60s or 70s when I was little, and then visited Disneyland Paris with the absolute breathtaking discovery land. I especially love the Orbitron and the Café Hyperion. All these details, oh, maybe that's why I love the Treasure Planet and the Atlantis movie so much. It's just the best thing for me. Let's start painting the body, shall we? I use my acrylic paints for this. If you're curious which material I use, I always list all materials used and the manufacturers in the description below. I can't really provide any direct links where you can buy them, I'm not in that territory yet. But you can search up the term in Google and I'm sure you'll make a find. As you can see, I'm going for a blue gradient on the Jaguar body. Since it's now canon that she is an almost divinely being that foresees the night sky, I want her body to look like she's part of the night sky herself. A zodiac sign, so speaking. Just like that one scene in Hercules. By the way, I listen to a lot of Disney songs in different languages and the German songs of this movie are just the bomb, like wow, especially the muses. While playing with the Jagger body in the beginning of the project, I thought a lot about the Jaguar in the Road to El Dorado movie. I rewatched the movie and thought that there was a scene where the Jaguar that chases the main characters around was a zodiac sign as well, but it only had a blue body, so that's maybe why I mixed them up in my mind.
the background, you saw me match the plastic body with the clay body and now I'm using a matte coat to protect the paint. I masked off the orb and the head just to get sure nothing actually drops on the shiny surfaces. Now onto a more complex part, her pedestal. I rise her with the orb up to later attach the planets that will orbit her. I use this old glass bottle and loose candle for this. Since the lid is hollow, I use aluminium foil and clay to stuff it and being able to hold the weight of my contraption. I do my best to smooth the bottom part so the doll stays straight and doesn't lean. I can't let the bottle stay empty. The risk of toppling over is way too high. So I filled it up with sand. To stay put, I glue the lid to the glass. After everything is secure and dry, I use white gesso to prime the bottle and the lid. I wasn't sure if the paint I'm using would adhere properly to the glass, so I primed it, but I'm not sure if I like the resulting texture of the glass. Oh well, it's too late anyway. the same gold paint I used for anything else on the doll until now. The color is just absolutely perfect. It looks like used but shiny brass. At the end, I attach these things to the bottom of the lid, I can't remember the word right now, so the bottom doesn't scratch any of my shelves. Until now, the chimera was imprisoned in this plastic whale. Now I shall unleash her. Now, hair. I'm not really one that can make good wigs. I prefer gluing the hair straight on. Especially when I'm going for a short, cute pixie cut. She doesn't need long hair, her body is impressive enough. For the hair, I'm using fairytale wool that I glued on with super glue and style it with styling gel. I chose a royal blue hair tone that I will match with a long fishtail that will she be getting. Right into her fins. To make the Pisces in the mixture more visible, I will be attaching golden fins on her face. 
To make two identical pieces, I redraw the shape, mirror it and use it as a guide for the other half of the fins. I tried many different variations on how I add the gold foil and I will be going with this method. I covered the metal skeleton of the fins with masking tape and now I glue the fins to this thermoactive gold foil. Since this foil is extremely prone to losing its pigment when touched with super glue, I use a roll on version of the same glue and look at this, it worked! Then I just cut the fins into shape and do the same once more. The doll still doesn't have hands. For a deity, that's not really fashionable. I made several hand options for her, but settled with this one. I made a metal skeleton and covered it with epoxy sculpt and attached it to her arms. At this point, I decided to not give her human hands anymore. She has transcended that stage a long time ago. She needs more appropriate hands. Claws. After everything is dry, I color her hands, I mean claws, with the same gold paint. Now is a good time to finally explain her name, because I'm getting really tired calling her the doll all the time. Her name is Opishu. What does that mean? Nothing. Or at least I hope it doesn't. I'm just waiting for someone to point out that Opishu is a really heavy swear word in the language. Since she's a chimera, I wanted her name to be a chimera as well. A portmanteau, a suitcase word. She consists of a jaguar, Pisces, and a rat. I found that the jaguar can also be translated to the ocelot, a big South American cat. The brightest star in the star constellation of Pisces is the Piscio, and the Chinese word for rat is Shu. So I put all of them together and got Opishu. I mean, I had like 50 different combinations, but none of them sounded really like an eternal mechanic god thing. So Opishu it is. Back to the doll. Or should I rather say, the planets. Yes, we are finally at the planet stage. Since she is an orrery, an astronomical instrument to display planetary movement, she will be getting her own set of planets. These are the planets of the world I made up for her. As you can see, I'm forming aluminium foil into small orbs varying in sizes. I destroy my fingertips and roll them on a flat surface to get the shape closer to an orb. I cover them again with a thin layer of epoxy sculpt so the surface is actually smooth and I'm able to paint on them. hand drill to make holes on one side so you can stick them onto a wire. I used the hand drill because I was afraid that I would accidentally drill through my mats and table. And here 
here with me, saving myself. Fantastic. to the fun part, the painting, and I want to play a little game with you. I will give each planet a name and if you find out what I'm referencing with each of them, write in the comments below. I call the first one Mideno. Now to the blue one. I use the references of actual moons and planets for these, so I try to make them as realistic as possible. I call this one Bob. The small one here I call Euphemia. Now to the small grey one. I use a dry brush for the crater effect. Call him Moon 2. And I'm a blue one. I call it Uminato. This is one of the bigger ones. I call him Sari. And this is the smallest one. I call him Ben. The more I look at them, the more they look like appetizers. This one I call Oda. And this is the biggest one of them. I call him Java. Here's a cute pinkish one. I call after all of them are dry, I gloss them with a delicious glossy varnish. And here's the contraption to hold the planets up. I created a ring around the pedestal in which I inserted wires to hold the planets. Pretty neat, huh? I of course color it the same gold color as the rest. It won't win any beauty prizes, but that part can go on the back side. Here I attach all my planets to the wire and it works like a charm.
Now onto the very last part that brings everything together, the tail, which connects the doll and the pedestal. I eye measure a crafting wire and flashed it out again with aluminium foil. While I'm at it, I decide now that it's time to attach the orb with the base. I used what a surprise a box sculpt again. I formed the tail before I attach it to the doll. After it's set, I formed a small swirl of the tail that I have been planning since the beginning. You know I'm something of an engineer myself. This is the big fin at the end of the tail. I sketch up the shape and bend the wires to my liking. as the other gold fins and make them with masking tape to give the foil something to grip on. It's not the prettiest but I was running quite late with finishing the doll up so I just kept it. And to be honest, it's not that bad. Next step to paint is the tail. Since her hair has a royal blue tone, I match the color of the tail with her hair to get the closed color scheme. gold of the fin with the blue of the tail like it did with her claws. I thought I forgot something and now I remember. Jaguars have patterns on the body. Like that's the whole thing. That's like forgetting tiger have stripes. So I quickly cover up my mistake and draw a jaguar pattern on her jaguar body up until her human half and even onto her arms. Jaguars have a special pattern. Unlike leopards, they have extra dots in their circles, so of course I painted this detail as well. Now to the very last step, the step I have been waiting for all this time while making her. Adding real gold foil to the orb she's standing on to make it look not only like a mechanical orb that has been broken open and now you can see the crystal orb inside, it also looks like continents on a planet. It was on purpose that this gold has a different more yellowy gold tone. I needed to break up the tone and tone and give the eye something to differentiate so the eyes doesn't get bored with the whole
of my birthdays, she also somewhat represents myself. And I'm really, really happy with the result. She combines everything I love and adore. She completely stressed me out when I was making her because the deadline came closer and closer. But I pulled through. And I hope you like her as much as I do. And if you watched up until the end, thank you so much for watching, really. That means that I did a good job making this video. Do me a favor and follow me on Instagram. Or maybe even on Twitter. There you can be part of my art process and even influence on how or, or what I create. Share it with a friend and like the video. I'm tired now and I will sleep for the next few days straight. Thank you again for watching. See you next time. Ciao, ciao.